What's going on guys? Welcome to a very special episode. So this is not only our 100th episode, which I mean, cow, we've put 100 episodes out on YouTube before getting into this <laughs> video that you guys have been requesting since we started. Yeah. Uh, so it's been quite the journey, but Kyle, what are we doing today? So guys, this is a video you've been asking for many, many times. This is the official unveil of the new property crock ponds. This property has kind of been an accumulation of keeping crocodilians for 20 years now. You've been designing the perfect crocodile enclosures. I mean, we're pretty close to that here. Pretty close, what? yeah. So how long have you been designing these specific ponds at this property? I've had this property for five years. I was designing for three years before I even broke ground, and then we've had a two-year construction. And still, even with that, you know, I still think these are far from the perfect pond, but they are impressive. So let's get in there. And I mean, you've kind of thought of everything here. I mean. From the, like these steps kind of, what, explain it. These, yeah. these fold up so that way the croc can't get out. It's basically yeah. the and these are just temporary too. So I'm gonna get automated steps that actually just the press the button will fold down here. But they will fold back up so crocodiles can never climb up or you can't leave a gate open. Even if it's above here, they're not gonna be able to get out. So get this right guys, you've heard in a few episodes now, we're gonna have, he's gonna have push up gate, uh, steps. So you just push the button, they go up and down and then you're gonna have automated Roomba lawn mowers. Uh -huh. in the tortoise greenhouse. So you're really designing this property to be hands off as far as maintenance. Yes, that's yeah. that's my goal is very, very maintenance free. Um, so that's why I sand here, so lack of grass growing. But even then it's just, it's, it requires a little bit of maintenance, yeah. but obviously far less than what I have at the other property. And even wow. the sheet pile. So this sheet pile is driven four feet in the ground, four feet above the ground. And then this is also rated for 250 mile per hour winds. So that's over a category five hurricane. So I built everything here to withstand a category five hurricane. Because obviously it's not like your snakes, Ryan, where you can just oh, put them in back a- back to the snakes, Kyle. No, I'm saying <laughs> it's easy because you can just put them in a bag, in a box, and you can transport them. Yeah. When a little harder with crocodile, You can't just pack up and move. Just looking at this, compared to the old property, guys, one thing that you gotta keep envisioned is everything that we keep or do is leading to a final product. You guys have seen, I mean, Kyle on other channels, you've seen us on our channel with the Crocodile uh, property. This is where that, uh, the final step is, is like an enclosure like this, just like you saw earlier this year with the tortoises, where they came from the other property to, mm -hmm. to their final step in the greenhouse. Every animal that we're keeping is leading to an enclosure like this, yes. or a property like this. Everything you're kind of seeing right now, when we say temporary, we mean it. So this enclosure is 140 foot by 50 foot. Now this is for two to three animals. Yeah. So it's not like there's gonna be 10 animals. So it's a very, very spacious area for the crocodile. Now this even, I mean, guys, I don't even know where to start. Like I said, three years of planning this property and obviously, even in the two years of construction, I was still planning every little detail. So I have thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of hours of just planning everything. Even every little detail is hours of planning and hours of discussions. So even down to the nuts and bolts and sanding these down and the spaces and you know the pitch. I mean, every little thing was planned out tremendously. So it's so hard to wrap it up, but and this isn't yes, even done yet, right? This, this enclosure still needs work. Yes. Even though it looks so nice, I mean, like this looks like a paradise, there's still stuff to be done. Oh, Granted, yeah. it's little things, but I mean, I feel like we're in Jurassic Park right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, guys, imagine this in about a month or two, we're gonna have the 15 footer launching out of here. It's gonna be insane. So we won't be able to get this close in a, in a couple months, but <laughs> I mean, this is just unreal. I mean, even down to the, the fencing around the pond. So the goal was is to give the crocodiles a natural pond but still retain the sides. Um, I went through concrete walls, I looked at fiberglass ponds, just something to hold the shape because the crocodiles just dig it all up and all, as we see at the other, pro other property, they'll dig it and then push that sand in and fill their pond. So yeah. then they go from a six foot deep pond to a two foot deep pond in a year. So we came up with sheet piles, so it's much like the walls. So the pond is eight foot deep and then the sheet pile goes eight foot past that, but it still breathes like a natural pond because the bottom is soil. So it still breathes naturally, but obviously it holds the sides so the crocodiles can't destroy it. So with holding the sides, I had to have designated ramp areas. So that's why we have a ramp area on either side. Now with that too, is holding the sides with the sheet pile, I had to have a concrete cap. So we did the concrete cap and covered it 
in liquid pond liner so it's very slick so the crocodiles can't chew their feet up on it if they do ever try to climb yeah. it. But with that, you have to block them because obviously the crocodiles don't try to go back and forth. So guys, this is one of the nicest features I personally think about these enclosures. I mean, you watched the video where we got in with the adult salties at like midnight mm -hmm. getting eggs. One of the things with that uh, egg wrangling day, that you, so you call it, is that big male was able to launch up at us from all sides. So in here, I mean, the female salty could lay in the grass. We could get in here, maybe even block off the male in the water with like um, plywood or something. But even like walking around the enclosure, he's not gonna be able to reach out or lunge out and grab us if we're trying to get away from the female or yes. distracted getting the egg. So that's gonna be an amazing benefit of these enclosures. And you're gonna have some pretty rare crocodiles in here breeding. So being able to get in, access it without having to worry about the male charging yeah. us down, it's gonna be It's much safer safe. enclosure, and that's yeah. what I designed it. So we, oh, we're just as safe to work with, and then we can kind of designate the areas where the animals get out, so yeah. we can kind of close that off when we're collecting eggs. And is this the um, same kind of chain link you use on the perimeter fence? It everything? is, it is. So this is uh, eight gauge instead of 11 and a half gauge, so it's much thicker. Okay. It's eight gauge and it's coated. Um, but I went through telephone poles, um, I mean, we went through so many different revisions of what we were gonna do. But also, guys, is I'm also a stickler about putting wood poles and then just attaching the, the chain link to one side because the thing with this enclosure is you can see this, like, the, this facility from all different angles. I have runs between every different pond, so you can see all these different channels. So with that, there's always gonna be a rough side because you can either see the chain link attached to this side or that side. So what we did is we cut the wood in half and sandwich the chain link in between, so it's a much cleaner look. Yeah. So it's a lot, lot, lot more work, but it's a much cleaner look. So a big key element to picking out which trees I wanted to go with was obviously hurricane proof. And I went with Florida natives. These are actually sable palms, so they are very, very strong in hurricanes. Now, granted, we just had to replace two, even uh, we lost a couple, but by, the, by this time next year, these will be completely full, completely shaded area, and the crocodiles can hang out, and it's also a great spot for them to breathe. Um, I mean, so, if they laid eggs in here, that'd be perfect because then we have all these areas to hide behind and kind of collect the eggs and exactly. dodge them. And yeah. we have that, we have an access point to the back to get out as well, emergency exit. So just for safety, we have an extra entrance and exit on either side. Um, but again, one access point with the crocodiles here. So yeah. we can focus on there, ensure we're safe, and we can do what we need to do. And one of the things that I see here with your enclosures that I don't see at many zoos you give a lot of the crocodilians major land space. I mean, yes. I would say between this and the sand, half the enclosure is land, half is water. But I mean, you're talking still 100 and something foot enclosure, so that's a lot. Yeah, there's a reason I call the other facility the R&D facility, the research and development, because I've learned so, so much on how these animals work, you know, how they, how they just interact with each other, how they just spend their time. And guys, a lot of the time, especially my Niles, they're out walking around, they're up in the corner of the fence. I mean, even in their big enclosure, which is 75 foot by 50 foot, they utilize every single inch. So I really want to provide them a ton of land space that they can walk around. And again, it's all about enrichment. And obviously they showed me they benefit from land use. All right, so another key element, obviously, with these ponds is ensuring they stay clean. Now, even though they are a natural pond on the bottom, they still breathe like a natural pond. They still have biological bacteria that is much like a natural pond, so they stay a lot cleaner than, let's say, let's say a concrete pool. That if you leave it without chlorine for a little bit, it'll turn green. But obviously, too, is you want to have fresh water all the time. Uh, so we have a, a well pump that pumps water in consistently, just a small amount, just to really keep circulation. Um, and also just let it overflow out into uh, a drain basin outside. Now this, let me see if I can get this off. So this drains out and then this is the drain pipe for uh, the grounds. So this just ensures the pond stays nice and clean for the crocs and also well circulated. So as I said before, each enclosure has a walkway in between every single one. So it gives you vantage points from every single angle, which is amazing. But obviously this is the most incredible view. This is the feeding platform or observation platform. So this overhangs over every single pond. So you can not only feed and get them to jump and again, enrichment, but also um, just being able to see them overhead. Oh, what's up, Ryan? What's going on, guys? So imagine me being a 15 foot saltwater crocodile leaping out of the water. Now, obviously we're gonna have pool days with these animals because why not? We enjoy it. We enjoy swimming in ponds just like them. So look for size comparison. Look how big this pond is. 
with me and the donut floaty. So talk about thinking of everything. So obviously on our channel, we like to get in close up and personal and work with the animals. Now this, I'm actually still in the pond and I'm standing on a shallow section. So I'm probably almost to my waist, probably two and a half feet deep. So we're gonna actually be able to get in here and maneuver around. Probably not with a 15 foot salty, but maybe with chubs. Chubs would be a good one. Uh, we can actually still plant our footing and uh, be able to get away if we need to. But underneath me is actually a cave. So these these guys have all the opportunity in the world to get their piece if they want it. They can go up on land, uh, on the sand area, in the water, dive down, and also go underneath the cave and just relax if they want to not be bothered for the day. I mean, Kyle, how deep is this cave under here? So you're about two foot, two and a half feet there, and the pond is eight foot deep. So you're looking at what? Four and a half feet? No, five and a half feet. Five and a half yeah, feet. Five and a half feet half underneath there. So, and that's just a giant labyrinth of wood pile to hold this concrete shelf up. Um, so they can kind of maze through there and swim around. It's just a perfect hiding spot for them. And how big is this platform? I mean, obviously it's almost the same width of the pond. <clears throat> yeah, but so it's, it's maybe 12 feet wide? No, I think it's about 20. 20, 20 feet oh. by 25 foot. So, so it's a big, it's two giant concrete pieces that are again coated in that liquid pond liner. So it's very slick, so they're not gonna chew their feet up. Uh, and then we have about six inches of sand on top of that. So again, just to ensure they don't hurt their feet at all, it's more, it's the most natural feeling, uh, most natural, uh, I guess, design we could do to ensure that they feel like they're in the wild. Yeah, and the, the benefit here too, is since we're running water all the time, is when we're standing here, we're gonna be able to see the crocs. That's a huge benefit. Yes. If you didn't run the water, I mean, I could see this getting a little murky and we'll have not so great of a time in here. <laughs> Now, obviously, guys, the, croc the ponds have been sitting. Uh, crocodiles are a very beneficial ecosystem because they, because what I've noticed is they really stir up the water, um, really stir up the algae that uh, the, that are on the surface. Any deposits on the ground, they're able to stir that up. So they kind of help just uh, release any of the the, uh, I guess, the algae buildup or any buildups in the pond. They kind of just stir it all up and help let it filter through. So obviously, with this, this is a brand new pond. So Ryan's essentially the crocodile, stirring everything up, all the loose debris, and it'll get filtered out. So then the stronger, uh, I guess more dense debris will settle the bottom. Don't worry, Kyle, I'll stir it all up. I'll pool parties here at least three times a week. We'll make Perfect. sure this is stirred up before the crocs get in. Before the crocs get in? Before. But before, after. during, and after. All right, guys, well, that wraps up the 100th episode of Primitive Predators. Yeah, and if you liked today's episode, make sure to hit that subscribe button, like this video, and even share it. I mean, this has been a fun video to make, and it's been a long time in the making. Also, if you haven't already, check out our merchandise, Permanent Predators. The link will be in the bio. Remember, we love you guys. We'll see you on the next video. See you guys.